knows how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I, I am not an African American. You're Oreo cookie, white right in the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an Afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I would slap you. Go ahead, make my day. Black at the ace of spades, but 100, 100 percent American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. Welcome to the third hour of the show already. Uh, 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 uh. Barack Hussein Obama. Amazing stuff, folks. It's Christmas time. We're going to be hearing a, a lot about heaven and hell and God and all the good stuff. This is Chris, uh, Chris. Christ is the reason for Christmas. Christ is the reason for the season. <laughs> so I guess we're going to be hearing a lot about this, folks. It's amazing. I'm learning a lot. I really am. I am learning a lot. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. We, uh, if you were not at our Sunday morning service this past week, you missed it. Yesterday's Exploring Your Faith Hour. We did a wedding. I performed a wedding yesterday instead of regular church service. And it was something else. It's going to be up on the website, bondinfo.org, later today. A lot of editing to do there because it was so long, but it'll be up later today. I, my producer found this documentary called Held, Hell Bound, Bound, Hell Bound, and he insisted that I watch it, and I did over the weekend. And it is uh um oh yeah, hell bound with a question mark. I need to make that clear. Hell bound with a question mark. So I watched it over the weekend and it was it was it was I was taken back by it. And I'm happy to talk to the writer and director Kevin Miller. Uh, Kevin is an award-winning screenwriter, director, and producer who has worked on many movies and documentaries. Uh, recent projects include Hellbound, with a question mark, Drop Gun, No Saints for Sinners, Spoiled, like Oiled, and Sex and Money, and on and on and on and on. And we'll tell you about that as we move forward here today. Uh, Kevin Miller is with me now. We're taking your phone calls at 888-7753-773, 888-77-JESSE. Uh, Kevin, good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Jesse. Good to be here. Merry Christmas. Yeah, same to you. Kevin, you, you live in uh, Abbott Ford, B.C., Canada? Well, actually, I recently moved. I live in Kimberley, which is a small mountain town in British Columbia. What is it like living there? I'm going to have to go there. Well, it's beautiful, actually. We spent the weekend skiing in uh, minus 23 degrees Celsius weather. So uh, it's, it's uh, cold and lots of snow, but it's uh, bright and sunny. Minus 23, you say? Yeah, that's in Celsius. I don't know what that would be in Fahrenheit, <laughs> to be honest. Man, cold. I, I could not handle that. Well, I changed my mind. I won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I come during the summer months or, month yeah, yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's nice then. Kevin, are you a Christian? I am. And... I saw your documentary, Hell Bound, with a question yep. mark, and it was, I was surprised at it a little bit. It, I, I didn't expect to see that. Um, what prompted you to do this documentary? Well, for me, it goes back to um, in 2008, I had a book, I had a friend named Brad Jersak who wrote a book called Her Gates Will Never Be Shut, Hope, Hell, and the New Jerusalem. And I actually edited the book for him. And, and what Brad does in the book is he says, you know what, if we're going to be biblical about what we believe about hell, let's, let's really be biblical. In other words, let's read everything the Bible has to say about this topic. Let's not just filter the Bible through what we already believe. And what I was really astounded by um, through that experience was 
um, not only the diversity of uh, views present in the text itself, but also if you look at the interpretive history around um, issues of hell and, and uh, really eschatology, the theology of end things, you see a really fascinating discussion going right back to the earliest days of the Church. Yeah. And so I really felt it was important to uh, take this conversation that had been happening within the seminaries and, you know, the places of higher learning and try and bring it more down to a, a grassroots, a street level. It's not a boring documentary at all, and I had thought prior to seeing it that it would be. <laughs> but absolutely that's, that's, not. That's unfortunate. A lot of people hear documentary and they think boring, but I think documentaries uh, are some of the most fascinating, um, you know, types of films out there. Was it? And I want to get to some of the things that happened in this documentary. Was it? Um, what was it like for you dealing with the different people that you interview? Did it? Did it leave any type of impression upon you? Yeah, I, I, definitely. I, you know, uh, the funny thing is, is, is that I think the the consistent experience we had, uh, especially when we uh, dealt with people who, you know, we perhaps had a, a strong difference of views with, is that we consistently were humbled by our encounters with these people. You know, um, you go into a situation and you're kind of maybe almost offended in some ways with, with the way certain people behave or what they believe. So, for instance, when we went to film The Hell House in Texas, I just had a real struggle. But, you know, when you encounter people one-on-one -on -one who you sort of have an ideological difference with, it really changes things because you yeah. realize that, that ideas might be different, but everybody in their own way, I think, is really trying to live life according to what they believe is true. Yes, and, you know, and so we may come down differently on certain points, but, you know, I encountered a lot of really good people out there who I disagree with strongly, but that doesn't mean I dislike them. And, and it was it was often humbling to go, you know what, um, I, if anyone's a jerk in this room, it's me, <laughs> you know. And so I, I think it was really a, a good spiritual discipline in a way. I think it is a good spiritual discipline to encounter people who uh, don't share your beliefs because it's uh, it's humbling. I got the impression, and I could be wrong with this impression, but I got the impression by the end of the documentary that, and I, and I apply it to myself too, we as human beings don't really know what we think we know. We can read about something, like you can read about hell, yeah. and then you know, you can interpret what you read about hell to mean whatever it 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 means to you, you know, to be whatever fit what you want it to mean. And I got the impression that no one really knew what hell was about. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, really, the only people who know aren't talking because they're all six feet under. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but I, I think that we can all take, a, theologians can take a, a good lesson from scientists um, in this regard, in that scientists, you know, can be pretty adamant and pretty emotionally invested in a certain point of view, but at the end of the day, they'll, they'll all admit that, that it's tentative. You know, we, we hold to a whole bunch of theories, um, and we, you know, even call them facts and that, but but we we always know that around the corner, somebody's going to find out something yes. that takes almost everything we believe and shows that we only had part of the picture. So, again, I, I think that what it really calls for, when, when you look at, you know, people who believe in eternal conscious torment, people who believe in annihilationism, people who believe in different types of universalism, these are all positions held by well-informed, well-intentioned um, Christians. Yeah. And so I think that should give us pause to go, um, y y to, to go. you know, we, we really need to hold, no matter what our position is, we kind of have to hold it with a, a tentativeness. You know, we can be, again, we can be totally enthusiastic about it and argue it strongly, but at the same time, we always have to have one ear to the ground to go, what are we missing? I couldn't tell what you personally believe or believed about or believe about hell. Do you believe that there is a hell? Well, you know, it's it's tough for me to say, Jesse. Like I, again, I all I can offer is a theory, and and I guess for me, I feel that my position would be this: is that I find um, it inconsistent if we if if our assumption is that Jesus is the is the perfect representation of God, and that um, that love covers over a multitude of sins if, if as the apostle paul says in first corinthians 13 that love keeps no record of wrongs and if god is love i find it inconsistent with god being loving for there to be 
um, uh, sort of a set of circumstances in which anyone is ever beyond the love of God. So I guess I would believe in the most general sense that the love of God is the most powerful force in the universe, and eventually it will conquer all. And so whether that involves some sort of suffering after we die, um, who knows? But I just have, I, I would say that rather than articulate sort of a view on hell, my view would be a view of God. And I think that kind of leads by default to a sense that I believe that all people will ultimately be restored to God. What that journey looks like, I, I can't really say. Amazing. Let me take a quick break. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Miller is with me, the uh, writer, director of Hellbound, question mark, back in a moment. 